Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers from the Works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject is Tapasya Part 2 from Sri Aurobindo. A steady development of the habit of a very quiet but persistent tapasya in the form of a quiet concentration of will to progress could be very helpful at this stage. 1st July 1934 Disciple Was there in me a continuous real sadhana in 1933? Was it not rather only a mental experience without any real solidity in it? Otherwise, why should such a fall have come during these two years? Sri Aurobindo There was certainly a real sadhana then and a very persistent preparation on the mental and vital planes. If there had not been, the descents of peace would not have begun. The fall came because when you descended into the physical consciousness to complete the preparation there, you became too passive, not continuing your will of tapasya. With the result that this sex force took advantage of the inertia of the physical consciousness to assert itself fully. That kind of passivity to the forces comes upon many when there is the descent into the physical. One then feels different forces playing in the consciousness without having the same power of reaction as one had in the mind and the vital. Sometimes peace, etc. from above, sometimes disturbing forces. I had to pass through the same stage myself and it took me two years at least to get out of it. To develop the physical itself, a constant will for the drawing down of the higher consciousness, especially the peace and force from above, is the best way out of it. 8th July 1935 Without tapasya, there can be no Veda. This was the course that the stream of thought followed among us. According to the sense of our Indian tradition, the capacity for tapasya belongs to the golden age of man's fresh virility. It fades as humanity ages and the cycle takes its way towards the ears that are of iron and with tapasya, the basis, divine knowledge, the superstructure also collapses or dwindles. The place of truth is then taken by superstition, irrational error that takes its stand upon the place where truth lies buried, builds its tawdry and fantastic palace of pleasure upon those concealed and consecrated foundations and even uses the ruins of old truth as stones for its irregular building. The psychic fire is the fire of aspiration. Purification and tapasya which comes from the psychic being. It is not the psychic being, but a power of the psychic being. The fire one feels within is always the fire of sacrifice and self-offering, the fire of aspiration or the fire of tapasya. The fire you saw was the fire of the psychic being, 
the fire of aspiration and tapasya burning under the earth that is to say in the subconscious it opens the earth the physical consciousness to the divine light moonlight may symbolize the spiritual consciousness and the room your own personal being or individual physical consciousness with these clues it will be easy for you to understand the significance of your experience the fire you saw was again the psychic fire of purification and tapasya and the garland was the offering it was preparing for the mother the psychic and divine consciousness pearl and diamond in the sadhak the beautiful place was also probably a symbol of the psychic and the lotus indicated the opening of the psychic consciousness it is the agni fire that you feel agni is at once a fire of aspiration a fire of purification a fire of tapasya a fire of transformation